Hello one, hello all, it is the gothiest ghost of them all, Caspa in the flesh. It's time for a conclusion, a finale of List Week. It is done. We are at the top 50, well actually, top 55 albums of the year. Let's just get the other five out of the way. I mean, not that I don't love them, I did love them, but it's, it's a long list. It's a long list. It's going to be a long night. It's been a long day. I'm sick, but I'm still motivated to be your critical plug and put you onto the albums that I think are great and I want you to check out. Okay? Okay. Um, at 55, Ada Rook, Code Death, No Redemption, Angel Curse, I Love You. Everything Everything, Raw Data Feel, Babytron, Bin Reaper 3, Soccer Mommy, Sometimes Forever, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, Laminated Denim. Okay, now let's let's get this started. At number 50, it's Jer, Bothered Unbothered. Really great, catchy, political ska on this. Um, great tunes, check them out. Uh, at number 49, it's Black Dresses, Forget Your Own Face, if your palettes have become accustomed to noisy, chaotic, distortion, distorted production, like immensely unhinged vocals, then look no further than this album right here. At number 48, um, a very alluring, very sexy, very sensual R&B album I'm talking about, Ari Lennox, Age, Sex, Location. At number 47, we get one of the goats of hip-hop teaming up with that's right, Danger Mouse, a very abstract hip-hop producer, and Night Goat being Black Thought with cheat codes. Um, definitely a match made in conscious abstract rap heaven, for sure. Um, at number 46, this album right here is certainly the opposite of heaven, but it does have some gospel elements in there, very very much done well, but very nightmarish at that. We're talking about Backwash. His happiness shall come first, even though we are suffering. And um, I feel it complements your style really well, too. At number 45, we have Worm Rot, Hiss. Definitely some animalistic grindcore here and great variations in style. Um, taking some risks on this album, too, which I think panned out really well. And definitely the best grindcore album of the year. At number 44, we have another band that you should absolutely check out. Check out this dissonant death metal meets sci-fi epic. Talking about Artificial Brain, self-titled. At number 43, greatly layered, textured, folk album. Talking about Daniel Rawson. You Belong There. Definitely an album I recommend with very attentive listens, like going back to it again and again, with, uh, with these, with these, use these. At number 42, an artist that I've never been a huge fan of at this point, but he's really turned it up a notch, and he's really knocked it out the park with the melodies, the fire, dreamy, cloud rap, hyper-pop production, like, they nailed it. It's, like, atmospheric, but it's energetic at the same time. I'm talking about Blade and Echo 2K, Crest. At number 41, Kralis comes through with a really savage black metal album. The sound in here sounds like they recorded in, like, a fucking ice chamber. Like, in just, just a bunch of animalistic, like, vocals on here. Which may not be for everyone, that's fine, but it's certainly for me. Like, I love when a metal album feels like it's in another place that you normally wouldn't record an album, like in a cave or in an ice chamber, like, like I mentioned. Love the guitars, love the drums, love the chilling synths leads on here. It's great. Number 40, Afro-Funk and Electro an Electro Band, a Bibio Sound Machine team up with synth pop band hot chip on electricity a great project here um a great coalescing uh with great synth lines 
great bass lines, great vocals, grooves are all over this thing. It's Afrobeat music for the future. Do not miss this one. At 39, speaking of the future, we have The Weeknd, Dawn FM, and I've seen the mixed reviews on this from the internet spectrum, saying like, oh, this album's trash, I miss the old Weeknd, what is he doing on here? And I'm just lost, like, the production is so cinematic, vocals are captivating, um, the vocals are actually definitely heartfelt, um, every hook slaps on here, and just great performances throughout. Like, I think maybe they're just not a fan of synth pop. Is that it? Are you not a synth popper? It's prob probably the case. Number 38, we have Beach House's most ambitious album yet. Um, I saw them live uh, a few months ago. Great performance. It's like living in a dream. And they just dive into like various sonic territory here. Um, outside their wheelhouse, but still in their beach house, with a four-part epic, once-twice melody. At number 37, we have a mixtape packed with bangers, taking more more risks, risks here, um, such as dub reggae, and absolutely killing it, we're talking about FKA Twigs, Capra Songs. 36, Nas comes through with Hip Boy, uh, once again. Um, and consistently just coming through with, like, fire after fire. Um, like, my hopes were really high when I heard two, but now three? This might be the best one. Um, and he's really, really been in his bag lately. Like, very focused, sounding hungry again, with a strong d display of reflective wisdom bars. I was gonna say another word, um correlate to wisdom, but we're going to go with wisdom. At 35, it's Kilo Kish coming through with a bunch of consistently futuristic bops, hard-hitting bops. Um, it's her sophomore LP with American Girl, and I feel she's definitely brought me to, like, another world here, just being hit with, hit with catchy hooks and melodies. Great. At 34, it's Kendrick Lamar, um, coming through with a very conceptual, very confessional, and devastatingly harsh in concept hip hop album that I've probably heard all year as far as confessions go. Um, definitely a powerful album, really explaining why he's been gone for so long, addressing social issues, domestic issues. Definitely a must-listen for any Kendrick fan with Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. 33, another band that blew me away with humorous lyrics, fun playing. I'm talking about Cheek Face, too much to ask. At number 32, definitely a hip-hop album that really wowed me this year. Um, definitely capturing the soulful essence of hip-hop and also addressing social issues as well. I'm talking about Smino, Love for Rent. At 31, Autopsy proves once again to earn their spot at the death metal table. I'm talking about morbidity triumphant. At number 30, Denzel Curry keeps showing his evolution artistically and as an individual with Melt My Eyes. See your future. At 29, it's Lupe Fiasco coming through with easily one of the greatest albums in his discography. Maybe the best with Drill Music and Zion. Showing his pen game is still on point with these creative concepts, great socially aware messages, and great production on top of that. At number 28, it's Kenny Beats coming through with a fantastic, innovative, and heartfelt collection of instrumentals um, that he has dedicated to his father who has pancreatic cancer. And with this album right here, with all the heart, all the soul, all the passion he's put into it, what dad wouldn't be proud of this? At number 27, it's the multi-talented La Kelly 47 with Shape Up. Just proving she's one of those artists who just could give you a banger, a ballad, bars, soulful singing chops as well. She's the total package. For sure. Um, at 26, an R&B album. Probably my R&B album of the year, honestly. Um... 
and I can say she has had a ginormous hiatus as well. And vocal versatility, multi-talents, very lush um, in production, like just showing her talent throughout. I'm talking about SZA, SOS, very emotionally potent album as well. I felt like I was on a journey listening to this. At number 25, The King of Coke Bars delivers one of the hardest albums out. Um, definitely a lot of ferocity in the vocals, clever bars, dope production, push a T, it's almost dry. Yeah. At 24, I'm still trying to figure out the genre here because, like, the elements they use, like, it's just so many things, but it culminates well, and it's very well crafted, and definitely hits emotionally, and just puts me in a place of wonder and magic. And it doesn't end up sounding a mess either. I'm talking about Jockstrap, I Love You, Jennifer B. And number 23, easily one of the best hardcore punks out of Japan right now. Just wild, super in your face, rowdy group vocals, a lot of energy, a lot of guts. I'm talking about Otoboki Beaver, super champion. At 22, legendary space rock band, Spiritual Eyes, comes through with Everything was beautiful, with powerful ballads, great playing. When they were in their bag, I feel like I'm having this outer body experience that's like a religious experience, just sending me on a journey throughout their album. That's that's what their music does for me. So, hell yeah, spiritualized. Maybe the wrong, wrong uh, figure of speech there, but yeah. At number 21, legendary post-hardcore band Gospel come back after their 17-year hiatus to kick ass once again with Loser. Uh, no, at number 20, we get a fantastically bizarre salsa and cumbia album. Very off the wall. Vocals are intricate and great imagination. I'm talking about Meridian Brothers, Meridian Brothers, El Grupo Rosimiento. At number 18, hardcore punk band Off takes a turn for the conspiratorial and the out of their fucking minds. Um, in, in a great way, artistically and conceptually on free LSD. At number 18, country takes another turn here, conceptually, in a great way, politically, and in a very refreshing way. I'm talking about Adeem the Artist, White Trash Revelry. At number 17, Chat Pile, God's Country, an album that will kick your ass, crush you, disturb you, haunt you, and enlighten you on very important social issues filled with great noise rock, distorted guitars, pounding drums, manically insane vocals, um, but definitely not recommended for the week at heart. But if you can handle it, take it. At number 16, we have Thoughtful Bars forward-thinking bars, vividly dark storytelling, um, like Billy Wood's Aethiops, I, I'm sorry, I have a hard time pronouncing that, but every time I listen to him, there's always something I don't catch the first time, but then catch the next time listening to him. So again, fantastic artist, just keeps on evolving, um, but definitely calls for an attentive listen, for sure. At number 15, I'm putting easily the best album of Beyonce's career, Renaissance. Such a friggin' great album. Epic. Completely epic. Like, her vocals have so much variation on here. Um, definitely giving the combination of Afrobeat, disco, a fantastic album. Great segueing, too. Um, just smoothly, one track to the next, one banger after the fucking next. And her writing here has gotten so much better. And I feel like I'm just put on a journey throughout this album. It really shows a lot of growth. You know, I love the grooves, has the grooves. Um, and yeah, I love it. And it is better than B-Day. I said it. At number 14, definitely another album that gave me another epic experience for different reasons. Good reasons, though. Um, out there production, multiple passages, great effects. I'm talking about Death's Dynamic Shroud, Dark Life. At number 13, 
definitely an album much necessary for this time. Um, super rebellious, kick-ass, great politics, sonically hardcore punk album. I'm talking about Petro Girls, Baby. And number 12, my favorite album, favorite metal album of the year. Another rebellious album too, but definitely more Doomer vibes here. Very chaotic instrumentation, super poetic, pessimistic lyrics, um, absolute theatrical, insane vocals on here. Um, but an album with certainly political importance. I'm talking about Ash Inspire, Hostile Architecture. And number 11, if you want to lighten up with uh, the politics and, you know, still consume them, I highly recommend Charlotte Didri and Bolis Pupil, topical dancer. Like, and I feel what differentiates dif differentiates her from the others is like her humor, very strong out, very strong standout personality, and the wild and groovy and eccentric production. Like, it's all here. It's great. Check it out, please. And number ten, a Gorgeous, hot, Mexican chamber folk album. I'm talking about Silvana Estrada and Machita. I think I'm saying that right. I'm, I'm sorry, like, this, this is not my second language here. I'm trying. But, yeah, definitely check it out. It's absolutely gorgeous. At number nine, a band I was not head over heels for in the beginning um, for a majority of their career, but I feel like they absolutely nailed it here with their most ambitious project yet. Um, it's endearing. The lyrics are poetic. The vocals are very heartfelt. It's very loving, very tender. But yet the playing is like very raw, like very innovative. The hooks hit. Um, personally, very touching. The writing's great. And not only, like, my favorite album, their discography, but my favorite indie folk album of the year, for sure. I'm talking about Big Thief, Dragon, New Warm Mountain, I Believe in You. At number eight comes an artist I was underwhelmed by with their debut, um, but she absolutely blew me away this time, for sure. Shut me the fuck up. Well, not really, because I reviewed it, but... <laughs> took me on like a multifaceted journey and I'm talking about Sudan Archives, Natural Brown, Prom Queen. The songs on here are just so textured. Her vocals just sound so angelic. Her instrumentation is like so organic and tangible and has like so many layers to it. Like it's just multifaceted changing and each track just makes me feel something. And that's what music's all about, feeling something. And she really captures the mood. She really does great doing that. Um, and, like, she's various, too, in terms of moods. Like, she's just unapologetically herself. She could be rowdy one minute, very loving the next. And definitely, definitely an artist that is separated from others like if you want an artist who can give you so much variation in terms of style in terms of vocals genres for that matter check this out you will not be disappointed i love it but number seven i suppose you could call this an art rock album maybe a post rock album but i digress it's black country new road ants from up there man such a compelling album here like the compelling performances on this thing, the great instrumentation with so much passion and feeling. Isaac's vocals are like so theatrical and like over the top. I truly and honestly don't know who's going to fill his shoes after, after he leaves. I really don't, but I just hope they keep that consistent fire going. And number six, an emotional album in the gangster rap context. Very heart-wrenching, too, and definitely raw in proving, like, Conway is one of the hardest rappers out here with really compelling lyrics, self-awareness, 
just showing his vulnerability, not afraid to like open up on a track. Um, talking about subjects of almost having his life taken, life taken, losing his son, and just letting it all out. Plus the production is like so grimy, hard hitting, like all of his bars hit hard in like every context. And I love it. I feel like his approach lyrically just really separates him from others in his lane. And it's fantastic. I'm talking about Conway the Machine, God Don't Make Mistakes. At number five, we got Prague Jazz Album of the Year. I'm talking about Black Midi, Hellfire. Like this album really puts me in a place of suspension and really is another gem in the Prague Jazz crown. Like, and I'm just putting this wacky fucking world with off the wall scenarios addressing war, sports, religion. Um, and the playing is absolutely non human. And not human, not non human as like shitty AI or like gent. I'm not talking about that. Fuck that. I'm talking about like technically phenomenal, but not posturing. Like, their instrumentation tells a story, and I love that. I love how their playing has character, and it's telling you a story as it progresses. Like, it's just phenomenal. Truly and honestly, I don't know anyone else who is playing like this or brings this much heat in this genre today, but it's epic. The vocals are bonkers. Um, if you consider yourself a jazz fan, <laughs> Take a Walk on the Wild Side with Black Midi, Hellfire. Definitely recommend it. And number four is an album that honestly and truly proves why they deserve their spot at number one in hardcore punk right now. Another chaotic but greatly political driven album. Um... I'm talking about Soul Glow, Disaporia Problems. Very energetic, very aggressive. Makes me feel like I'm in the pit throughout the whole entire listening. Definitely an album you should check out. At number three, an album from an artist who just keeps getting better and better. And I'm not saying I didn't enjoy the first album I did. I didn't love it, but... I felt De DiCaprio 2 was the better one, but now I'm head over heels for J.I.D. Forever Story. Like, this dude really captures the talent of a great rapper, and also it's done with such artistic expression. Like, he's not trying to show off to you, he's trying to give you a message, he's trying to evoke emotion. And it's real emotion, real expressions. He's talking about real shit on here, like social issues, family issues, love, like everything that like matters he is putting on here, full display from his heart. And also like from the flows, the vocals, like he, he sounds great singing. Like he could actually do an R&B album if he wanted to and sound better than half the dudes who actually do R&B. Like, it's insane. And the production's immaculate too, very moving, lyrics again, fire, amazing, fantastic. It's my rap album, the friggin' year. At number two, I was flirting with the idea of putting this album at number two. Um, I mean, at number one, but I feel like this album definitely could be at the number one spot, but the number one spot is there for a reason. But I do think this is the dance punk album of the year. Definitely. Like, it's groovy. Production's wild. Um, and so it's not just for the manic vocals it's not just for the grooves and the production and the playing which is fantastic it's for the message and how 
everything correlates to the message it's trying to send. Like every song correlates if you pay attention. And it's just showing the devolving of the growing of mankind, of the evolution of mankind, how evolution has failed <laughs> along the way. And maybe we should turn back with how destructive humans could be from murder, falling for conspiracy theories, mental health, stealing, racism, etc. And it just like hits with such theatrics in terms of the vocals and not to mention the grooves, the hooks, they slap, they're so memorable. Um, the fantastic songwriting. Vocals are unhinged, like the performance, like you really know he's capturing a character whenever he performs on a track, and I love that. And, like, how could you not engage with that? How could you not? But if you don't, whatever. Viagra Boys, Cave World, highly recommend it. And number one, an artist whose albums I loved in the past. Wasn't too crazy about her previous albums, though, but now she's taking things in a more darker direction in, in concept with songs about death, with songs about life, enjoying life, enjoying life with others. And it's hauntingly gorgeous. Um, there's something eerie, but something enticing about it at the same time. Um, I love the mixing too. Like it's so prominent. Like you hear and feel every instrument. And I love how open the mix is too. It's a great, great, greatly poetically performed album. The vocals are so intimate. They carry so much beauty and passion. I'm talking about Natalia Lafocade, Les Todas, De Todas, Les Flores. I'm sorry. I'm sick. Okay. I'm not going to pronounce everything right. But what is right is my placement of my album of the year. Everything on this album is fantastic from the passionately intimate, expressive vocals, the bass, the beautiful strings. It's, it's just amazing. And that is my album of the year. Natalia Lafarcade, De Todas Las Flores. <sighs> so, that's it. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for supporting who has been supporting. I promise through time I will improve the presentation that is given to you. This will not always be from my phone. Um, I will be getting a computer soon. Camera soon. Just uh, stay patient. Things will, things will change for the better. Um, I hope you all have... A great new year. I hope you're all doing well. And I hope you love these albums that I have shared with you. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, oh, you didn't review those on the channel. No, I didn't because I didn't exactly have time to review and record them formally. But I do love them. And Next year, more consistency, definitely better execution. Casper, the Gothic Ghost, till we meet again.